My name is Matt Richardson, and filming is Liz Richardson. We're the co-founders of Indigo Inc. And we're going to give you a shop tour, so follow me. Uh, actually, first, this is our conference room. We're going to come back here later. We'll show you samples, our swatch book, our metallic ink swatch book. Uh, follow me. Come on in. This is our large format area, and Matt Ellison is printing posters right. and cutting them down um, on our Epson. And we're going to detour into the press room right now. This is our newest machine. It's a digital die cutter and score. We use it for die cutting pieces, and we can also make packaging. We'll show you the packaging later. Right now, we're going to die cut something. Come on over. Right now, it's reading the registration mark. Make sure the teeth are perfectly square. And then it's going to start die cutting. Right now, we're making circles, and it does a really good job of perfect circles. When it's done, it'll eject the teeth. Then it grabs a new one. Here's what the final piece looks like. We're going to use our digital die cutter to show you how we score and die cut to make package. Right now it's scoring the sheet. Now it's cutting. samples of things that can be die cut and scored on the machine. You can also do double thick pieces and die cut them. And duplex. I see and one duplex. of them has like a different back on it. Yeah. Packaging that can be made. All this is possible. I want to introduce you to our project managers. There's also a kitten and a dog here today. <laughs> this is Katie hey, and Freya. Freya. Hey, Freya. Hey. How you doing? And this is Thea. Hello. And Jessica. Hi. And hiding down there is a kitten. What's the cat's name? Hamish. Hamish. Hi, Hamish. Project managers are the uh, folks who do orders. They do estimates. They work with our clients. Um, and they act as the advocate for our clients as the job goes through production. So we're going to go to the press room now. And this is Sue. Sue prints our envelopes. She runs our die cutter. She does a lot of stuff here. Say hi, Sue. Hello. This is our envelope area. We're printing some envelopes now. We're doing white ink on red envelopes. So come take a look. And we can also print full color. I'm going to show you some samples over here.
All right, I'm gonna show you how we do foil stamping here. We do it a little differently than uh, traditional foil stamping. We use a process called sleeking. So what we do is we print whatever we want to foil uh, on our press, and then we run it through this machine here. This is our sleeker. Right now I've got it set up with silver foil. So I'm gonna show you how it looks as it's going through and what it looks like when it's all done. Pretty quick process. If you want to walk to the other side, you can see where it's coming out. You can see what it looks like. All done without having to make an expensive die. We have a lot of different foil colors blue, red, green, black, rose gold, matte silver. Now we're going to take a look at our HP Indigo 7800 and see what Alex is up to. Hey Alex. Hey guys. Can you uh, give us a little tour of the press? I absolutely can. So this is my baby. HP Indigo 7800. It is kind of the best of both worlds, offset and digital. So if I pop the hood, Going to look kind of familiar to an offset press. What we have here is there's a laser array just like a digital press right up here. That etches a stencil onto a photoreceptor plate that wraps around this drum right here. Uh, there are seven ink stations in this press so we have white, cyan, magenta, yellow, black, silver metallic, and then a primer to let us work with some more unusual stocks. Those get deposited in the same pattern that that laser array puts down on the photoreceptor and then gets transferred onto a secondary drum right here. The paper gets wrapped around a third drum. Those two meet in the middle and the image is transferred right from the uh, secondary drum onto the paper. So that gets us the ability to print on really unusual textured substrates, uh, synthetics, uh, pretty much almost anything we're really looking to, uh, to conduct on here we can do. Um, but with the flexibility of being able to do all sorts of variable data without the you know time-consuming, complicated process of swapping out plates and things like that, because it is functionally a digital press, even though we're working with liquid inks down here. Uh, so sometimes my days feel a little bit more like a plumber than anything else, making sure that everything stays where it's supposed to be. But um, there is uh, there's an entire system of tubing in here to route that liquid ink all the way up to the ink stations in the press, while the electronics are doing the actual imaging portion. All right, thank you, Alex, appreciate it. I noticed this press recently grew a mustache. It did, uh, I'm gonna put some googly eyes up here, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I also noticed this right here. Tell us a little bit about, about that. Uh, so <laughs> patience there is sort of the name of the game. It's really easy to rush and get some subpar results, and that's just, not what I'm looking to do. Uh, every time we fire this press up, everything that comes off of it, we stop, we look at it real close, make sure that everything's perfect, and then we'll keep going. I understand these things are also pretty finicky. Yeah, uh, it's, it's definitely a situation where we either make the time for the maintenance or the press will make the time for the maintenance for us and never at a good time. Amen. Alex mentioned metallic ink. We're gonna stop right now and we're gonna show you a quick video on tips and tricks for using metallic ink. Metallic ink has been around for quite some time in the world of traditional offset printing. Printing metallic ink digitally is a brand new capability in our industry. We here at Indigo Ink have been geeking out over this new capability, and now that we've gotten a good handle on the technique, we are super excited to see what kinds of awesome designs and print projects will come our way in the future. We've created this short video to both provide some design inspiration and to give you some useful tips and tricks to make the process as smooth and efficient as possible. After months of testing, experimenting, and running a wide variety of metallic ink projects, we've noticed certain types of designs and color choices work better than others. The following are some things we've learned along the way so that you can get the best results possible on your next metallic ink project. Tip 1. To save yourself potential headaches and more work down the line, 
it is important to educate yourself, ask questions, and understand the limitations early in the design process. If you have an idea and are concerned about how it might turn out, reach out. We are happy to help and consult. And there is always the option to run a concept proof just in case. Tip number two. When deciding what color builds to use, it is important to consider how the process works. That is, silver ink plus CMYK equals metallic ink. Why is this important? Because the metallic ink base layer is silver. Printing the CMYK layer on top will shift the appearance of the color. In general, we recommend using lighter color builds for optimal shimmer. This is because darker CMYK builds are more opaque and the metallic ink will not show through. While we are not able to color match metallic ink, we have created a handy dandy color swatch book to use for reference, which are available upon request. If you're trying to achieve a specific color, we suggest creating a color from the swatch book or starting from the swatch book that you know we can print to ensure you are happy with the results. Tip number three. Coated versus uncoated papers will produce two different metallic effects. Because the process involves ink rather than an actual metal foil, the texture of the paper will have an effect on both color and the texture of the ink coverage. For coated papers, such as blazer gloss or silk, the metallic ink has a smooth and shiny look similar to matte foil. For uncoated papers, such as Mohawk Everyday Digital or Superfine Eggshell, the metallic ink has an almost sparkly look that emphasizes the texture of the paper. Another important detail we should make note of is that to make metallic ink work on uncoated paper, a layer of white ink needs to be printed under the metallic ink. Details and setup instructions will be forthcoming in a later video. Tip number four. Using metallic ink as a full flood versus a spot will produce different effects. We have found that the metallic ink stands out the most when used with low ink coverage on the paper. However, it can also stand out when used as a contrast with a full flood or heavy ink coverage design. This is a picture with metallic blue against CMYK black. As you can see, the metallic look doesn't show up very well. There are two things going against this one. First, the dark color build of the metallic blue takes away from the metallic shimmer. Second, the glossiness of the surrounding full flood and rich color build black ink takes away from the metallic contrast. Metallic ink does also work as a full flood, giving the appearance that the piece was printed on metallic paper. Tip 5. Sometimes the foundation is the presentation. Metallic ink can be used as a silver ink spot color. As shown here, where the silver ink alone is used giving the appearance of a matte silver foil. Tip number 6. In general, we recommend avoiding fine lines in thin script text. Metallic ink shows best as a larger print element bolder, larger text. Super shiny. And that's all the information about the 7800. We have another press. It's HP 5600. And it's a little smaller version. It's also a good print machine. And Alex and Grant are running it now. And then over here is our very massive uh, selection of papers. And I'm going to walk you over to our bindery where we finish everything that we printed. Alright, this is our laminator. We use it for doing soft touch laminate. And it's set up right now to do soft touch lamination on both sides. And over here is the table where we put everything that needs to cut. So right now we have a few jobs that are lined up to cut on one of our two cutters. Okay, yeah, sometimes accidents happen. Oh yeah! This is our paper drill. We can do one, two, or three hole drilling of various sizes. And this is our corner rounder. It's what we use to make cards with rounded corners. This is our paper score. We use it to put a nice crease in the paper before we fold so that it doesn't crack. So it helps us to have a really nice finished product. But turn it on, it's kind of loud. But I'll show you how it feeds. Then I'll fold a piece by hand.
really nice without cracking. That's the finished card. This is our slitter. We use this mostly to cut down business cards and to make greeting cards. So I'm gonna show you the machine cutting down business cards and then I'll show you some samples of greeting cards. The greeting cards have a score in it too, so they fold nicely. Come on in and take a look here. It's gonna pull the sheet through the machine. It's gonna cut it and it's slitting. And then you'll see them come out on the left. Finished product. And these are samples of greeting cards that we've done. So same idea, the whole press sheet goes through the machine. It slits it, cuts it, and scores it so it folds nicely. So this is our booklet maker. I'm gonna show you how we use it to make booklets. And this is an example of one of our little notebooks that we make. And I don't know if you can see it on the video, but that's printed with metallic ink. So come over here. Let's start. It's gonna feed in the interior and it's gonna pull in the cover. Next, I'm going to show you our QC area. After production finishes a project, they put it on this table to be quality checked. And somebody from production will come over and take a look at the finished job and make sure everything looks nice, looks good, and perfect. And they compare it to the job ticket and they make sure there's a correct quantity. We do have a counting scale. We'll use a counting scale to count the sheets to make sure that it is the exact right amount. And when we're all done, print a little report and put it with the job so the client knows exactly how many pieces they're getting. And one of the tools we use for putting stacks together and holding them together is a paper banner. So this is a fun toy. It's really like that. It's all done and banded. We also have a shrink wrapper. We can shrink wrap too. Behind me is our shipping area. When the project's completely done, it goes to shipping, we box it, we wrap it, make sure that it's protected for shipping so that when it arrives to our clients, it's in great shape. And then it goes out the back door when UPS picks it up. And next, we're gonna look at our duplexer. So our duplexer isn't running right now, but we use it this is, this is the machine, and we use it to glue two sheets of paper together. So we'll take this and glue it to this, and we'll make a double thick card. And it looks really nice, and this is drying right now, but we'll cut it down. It's gonna be a nice thick invitation. And now we're gonna check out the UV coating room. So Matt is coating each sheet with a gloss coating. And what it does is it makes the whole sheet very glossy. We're going to walk this way. I'll show you our creaser folder. We use this machine to score and fold cardstock. So this is a brochure. This went through the machine. The machine scored it and it came out the end completely folded. And over here is our binding area. We do coil and um, wire binding here. So this is our puncher. We use this for both coil and wire. And this is a sample of a wire bind. Next, I'm going to show you our perfect binder. 
So it's not on right now, but I want to show you what the finished product looks like. So what we do is we use it to bind books. So this is a softback book. Really a notebook. We're almost done with the tour, but before you leave, I want to show you some samples of our jobs that we printed. Come on in. So right now we're really showing off some of the fancy stuff that we do. Um, on the sleeking machine, we do foil. I don't know if you can see that. And then we can also print with metallic ink. These are all printed with metallic ink. The way that works is we print a silver metallic on the bottom and then we print CMYK on top and it makes a really nice shimmery look here. Cool. You want to show us the swatch book for that? Sure, here's a metallic ink swatch book. And if you can see that, we made this so there's metallic ink on one side and the CMYK um, value on the right, so you can see what it looks like before and after. So it shows the color build you need to use, right? Right. To get the, the effect you want. Right, and these are all coated sheets. In the back of the book here, we have uncoated, and this is an eggshell. We also had to add some white ink to the eggshell to make that work. And we, one of the things we uh, found with metallic ink is that lighter colors work better. Dark colors, you just can't tell that it's metallic. So if you're going to do metallic, plan for a lighter color. And this is our paper swatch book. So this will show you all of the different paper stocks we keep on the floor here in the shop. And also on the inside, you can see any environmental specifications. So this one's FSC certified. We do have some paper stocks that are 100% recycled. Um, all you have to do is look in the corner here and it'll tell you. Um, this paper stock is 30% recycled. Um, here's another good example of a metallic ink job. So this has silver metallic with CMYK on top, but I really like what the designer did here. They put a nice border around the edge with silver metallic and the text here in the middle is silver and different elements of this piece are metallic. This is a pretty fun job. So this, you can't tell, but it's soft touch laminated. It's duplex, so there's two sheets glued together. And then it has a rainbow holographic foil on top. Oh, also, and a clear foil. It's hard to see, but in some spots on these triangles, there's a clear foil. Here's a piece we did a few years ago. Um, we printed it and die cut it here. So it's a gold foil, which we did on our sleeker, and then a clear foil that we put over top of black print. I don't know if you can see that. And then we die cut the piece, taped it together, and created a little envelope here for folks who won Addy Awards. And then here's a good example of a greeting card with red foil. Really like how this piece turned out. CMYK printing on the inside and then red foil with CMYK printing around it. And that concludes our tour. We really appreciate you coming out to check out Indigo Ink and we hope you enjoy the rest of Design Week.